In this video, we'll be talking about how we can create the horizontal alignment for row 8. So first, we're going to go into, as you can see, here we have chapter 7. And then we go into master files, and then we work, we're going to work on tutorial the 2D version. Now we're going to open it in Invos, not MicroStation, because we're going to be using Invos mainly to create the geometry for the project. So now that we open inroads, we have MicroStation open automatically. And then in inroads, first we're going to start by creating our geometry project from inroads file new. And then we go to geometry, we call it tutorial. And then for the description, it's going to be the same. Apply and then close. And then in the geometry in here section, you'll be able to see your tutorial. If you were in another section, let's just say surfaces, you're not going to be able to see your tutorial because your tutorial, the one you created, is a geometry project, so you have to go to geometry in order to be able to see it. And then make sure your tutorial project is set to active. So now, uh, what we're going to have to do is create the geometry for route A and then import it to inroads and create the stationing for it. So the first thing that we have to do is actually make both uh, points A and B visible because these are the main points that we were, we will be using to create the basic geometry for our A. So if you go into layers in here and then into level 3, it is kind of dark so you can't see it over the dark background. If you change it into another color, as you can see in here, now we can see point A, point B, both in which we will be using to create route A, and then this is point C that we'll be using to create the Laguna Canyon road, but this is for a different part of um, this project. Um, uh, mo moreover, you should know that both the North and East thing for all of these points are provided in your highway design manual in chapter four. So if you can't, or if you want to be, if you can't like see these points or you want to be more accurate, you can always go into Chapter 4, and then enter the, and enter the northern and eastern for both points A and B, and then in later part of this project, point C. But now that we can see it, we, uh, we can see that we can actually just snap to them. Uh, before we start, uh, one thing I, wanted, I want you to know is that some of you might not have the key in. So if you want to have it, you can always go to utilities and then just click on key in and then you're you'll be able to have it and then for all of these main task toolboxes some of you also won't be able to see them and then there's a lot of um, commands that you need to do using them so if you don't have them you can always search on Google and see what command and which toolbox they belong to and then you can always go to tools, go all the way down into toolboxes and then click and choose whatever toolbox you want to have on your screen. So let's see, I want to, let's just, for, a dem for the demonstration purposes, let's just say I want the toolbox features, I only click on it and then click OK and then I will be able to see it on my so now, in order to create the alignment for Route 8, we have to create first a line from point 8. And then um, we have to snap to point 8. If you can't snap to it, you can always go to this icon in here and then just click on whatever snap mode you want to choose and then just snap. And then from here, we're going to go and enter X, Y, and then we're going to enter the coordinates that they gave us in the highway design manual. Uh, you should know that uh, you should know that the east thing represents the X value and the north thing represent the Y value. So if you were to enter the values that are given to you in the book, and um, make sure that when you're entering these values, you don't have any spaces, because if you have any space, this is case sensitive, so any space might actually um, not create 
my loop to not creating your line. And then for the second line, we're going to go from point B and then the next point also given to you in your design manual. We're going to be in here and change it right now. So now we have our two main uh, lines and then we're going to only, only create a line snap to the to both ends of the lines to create the third line. Now that we have created our lines, all we have to do now is create a circular fillet. So the first one will have a radius of 1250. You should click on both. Clicking on both will actually trim that so you don't have to trim it by yourself. But even if it was not trimmed, you have to trim it manually because if you don't trim it, it will mess up your um, stationing. The second one will have 1500 radius, and then we're going to create it. And here we are. Now, something that it is, that is not well explained in your, in your manual is how to create a complex chain. So you're going to be you're going to have to create a complex chain in order to have one element that you're going to use for your stationing. So in order to create a complex chain, you have to go to your groups toolbox. See this icon? This is the create complex chain. So one thing to note when you're creating complex chain is that since your stationing should be from left to right, when you're creating your complex chain, you should go from left to right and click all of the segments right after each other. So I'm not going to click this one and then go all the way to this one and then come back. No, they have to be in order. So here you click them in order and you should have five segments. So three lines and then two circular fillets. And then after you're done with selecting all of your objects, this is very important and you should do it exactly how you do it. So you're going to go to the right portion of your project and you're going to left click once on the screen. And then after you're done, you're just going to get out of this command. Now after you're done, if you click on the complex screen, as you can see, you have one object right here. So now that we have our complex chain, we're ready to go and we can start creating our geometry project. So in order to create the geometry project, we're going to go in, in nodes to file and then import geometry. And then here, we're just going to name it well, eight. and then the same for the description. And then we're going to click apply. Now after clicking apply, I got my, as you can see here, I already have my route, my route in, and then if I click on it, it is highlighted for me. Some of you may not have it right away, so in case you don't have it, and then you click it, and you click apply, and this menu, or this window, disappears. If you look at the bottom left corner of inroads, they're going to ask you to select the object that you want to import into your geometry so in that case you click on your complex chain and then after it is highlighted all you have to do is actually go out of the command and then this window will pop up again and then after you're done the only, uh, the only thing you have to do is just click close now that we have our geometry we have to make sure that it is active if it is not so if it has this red square around it, that means it's active, but if it's not, the, you only have to click on uh, right click on it and then just set it into active. Now in order to create the geometry, we're going to have to specify our stationing first. So we go to the geometry uh, menu and then horizontal curve set stationing and then we define that the, this our stationing is going to start with 10 and not with 0. And then we click apply and then that's set we go to geometry view geometry and then stationing now that we're in stationing we're going to specify what exactly we want to see in our alignment so if we go to regular station we want to see major stations major ticks and then minor ticks we don't want to see minor stations and then for the major stations it is specified to you in your higher design manual this is the format that we need and then 
if we click on this icon, we're gonna have a pop up window, and then in here, we're just gonna leave everything as it is, but we're gonna have the horizontal as point two. We apply and we close. And then, one thing I, I didn't mention is that this line we're creating should be under a layer that you create that is called CL or center line in our term. And then this um, layer is the one that you're going to use to create the center lines for the rest of this um, project. As you can see, it is not very obvious what station you're looking at because you have not so in order to have um, a better view of the stations, all you have to do is go to settings, view attributes, and then you're going to click the text notes off. And now you can actually view your uh, station better. And as you can see, we start from 10. So now that we have our center alignment, we're going to start creating our lanes. So if you look into your higher design manual, your lanes should be very similar to this. So as you can see, we have three layers that you, you should be creating. Uh, we have the ATW, LL, and then the SL. So I'm just going to create one layer i will show you how to do the copy parallel one and then i'll uh, i will be showing you the final product so now in here we're just going to create the utw layer we're going to start it to be cool set active and now that we have it as active uh we should click and here and then set it by level so we won't be confused by the different layers because um, it will be so much easier for you to distinguish the layers if they have different colors. So now we're going to go to the move parallel command and then for the first one we're going to do a copy and then make sure you click on the make copy you select it, you check it. We're going to create a copy that, it, that has a distance of 30 when away from the center line. So we click on the center line, we go up, click, and then we go down and click. So this is how we do the move parallel one. So now let's just save this one. So we can open the final product and how it will look like. So the final product should be looking very similar to this one over here. So as you can see, we have the center line and then we have the ETW presented by the blue. On both sides we have, I think, um, yep, it is the LL layer with a greenish color and then the brownish color for the SM. And this is how your round A should look like.